Okay, so this video is going to be a little bit different to the usual because after the doom and gloom of the Porsche marketplace in 2019, I want to know what's going to happen this year. And I also want to know, and I'm sure you do too, what the experts are tipping to be the cars to buy in 2020. I'm going to speak to two specialists from around the industry with more than 30 years experience between them. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome, Carl, from PorscheBuyer.com. Thanks very much for having us. I'd really like to know what happened last year then. I think if you speak to most people out there, they'd say, yeah, the market tanked heavily for anything performance and anything prestige, and obviously that hugely affected our brand yeah. and Porsche. So uh, high-end performance stuff became very, very, very um, nerve-wracking. So a lot of Porsche centres stopped buying GT cars altogether. A lot of Porsche students were not allowed to buy GT cars, so they were happy to do sale or return. What about the air-cooled market? Collectors of cars or real advocates of the brand or real con connoisseurs of, of vehicles, they kind of all just took a step back and just thought, let's just see how this play out. So there were just fewer transactions on those cars. And when that happens, it makes it look like the prices go down but but in actual fact even when the prices were being reduced the cars weren't being sold so in one sense you can look at it and say okay these cars are falling out of the sky uh, but but actually the reality is they weren't transacting at even the lower numbers the reality is people just wanted to wait and see how the market played out yeah. and that's started to warm up now what's going to happen this year then carl this year I, I don't know about you mate but i just think this year is buzzing for porsche there's so much stuff going to be thrown into the mix Electric is going to be changing the landscape of how Porsches depreciate this year. Uh, GT cars, I think we've now seen that the window for people to make a premium markup on their GT cars, in my experience now, that is that is no more than a 30-day window. Right, I think okay. people, wow. uh, yeah, and, and that's a good thing because I think now that will really stop people, these cars getting into the hands of people who have no intention of using them. Bizarrely, there seems to be a warming up towards 993 again. So I think we were chatting the other day and we were saying, like, for, for the longest time, the 993 was the last of the air cooled, the hand built, and everybody who didn't even know about Porsche knew that, and so those prices were doing well. And you couldn't give away your 964 for five years or more. And then all of a sudden, the 964 became the air cooled car to have, and nobody looked at G Series cars and nobody looked at 993s. And now all of a sudden, 993s are people are thinking actually they look, they look cool again because people have just... Is that, just playing devil's advocate, is that because um, people again appreciating the fact that it's the last hand-built and air-cooled 911 or is it the fact that you can't, you can't find a good 964 manual C2 coupe? I, do you know what, so this is controversial but I don't think it's got anything to do with money and I think it's got to do with us as people who love the brand. Okay. And if you think about most, the fact that you love a Porsche probably straight away says that you're not your average car buyer. The whole point of these little air-cooled or rear-engine cars is they're so different. So I think there's always something with us as Porsche people that's looking to be different. Where else would you put your money in, in the realms of the 911 sure. for 2020? Definitely 991.1 Carrera and Carrera S and GTS. I think the prices have held out and gone nicely upwards on GTS. So probably that's not a place you're going to make money, but you're probably not going to lose money. Okay. 991 Gen 1 Carrera and Carrera S, and, and the four-wheel drives of those. In the trade, those cars are starting with a three, and you're into them with a four. That is just too much car for the money for me. It that's is. just I unbelievable. I don't know about you, I still remember them being new. They still feel like a new car. And I think history will judge the 991.1 as being one of the greats. I've always said that. So I think that um, 997 GTS, they are just the enigma that just keeps doing what they want to do. We speak to loads of independents and they just tell us they cannot get enough of them. They're such good news that, you know, people love them, purists love them. They are the best of the last mechanical 911. And it's incredible, isn't it, for a, a car with Carrera on its deck lid to have never really dipped too far below list price. That's it's special. really held its money. Yeah. I don't think it would be somewhere where you're likely to make money. But I do think, again, it's free motoring for the next couple of years. Excellent. Carl, I appreciate your time. And um, we'll get you on these a bit more because your knowledge of the industry is exceptional. And again, you've got that good link because you deal with the Porsche Centre, so you're a bit of an ear in, inside for, for us. Yeah. So we'll get you on this channel again soon. Um, in the meantime, let's go inside and warm up. Thanks, mate. Thank Cheers. you. Nice one. So that was Carl Mayer from PorscheBuyer.com. But does Jonathan Franklin at Rare Cars agree with him? 2019 was hard. I think. Porsche has held its own though, a few models, they went a bit too high 
they've come back a bit and now they're at a sensible level. They don't seem to be going down any further, which I think is good. So I think when you consider other manufacturers compared to Porsche, I think they've held their own actually. Where we've clicked over into 2020 then, what's changed? Why is there this kind of air of positivity and enthusiasm around the market? Is it just um, politics? I, th I think a lot of it is politics and I think I think people are frustrated as well because the true enthusiasts, they haven't had their, their car fixed for a long time. Yeah. And you know, a lot of these guys own cars for two or three years. The market's not been great for probably a couple of years in actual fact. So I think, as you say, people are getting the itch to go and maybe buy something new or, or look for their next, you know, their next bit of fun. The GT market, as you know, and there's plenty of people watching this that own GT cars, that yep. market has softened yep. in the last year. Where, is, where do you think that's going to go for, for 2020? I, I still think the older GTs are, or finding a good one is very hard to find, even though I'm talking sort of 997s so, um, and 996s. You know, GT3 RS 996, very hard to find a good one. 997, in actual fact, that's, it's becoming the same with those as well. To find a low mileage, good car, you know, with good provenance, um, is very, very hard indeed. As you get to 991, uh, obviously they produce a lot more cars, and I'm afraid, like most other manufacturers, they've kind of diluted the GT market a bit. I do think that the the earlier GT cars, like the 996 and the 997, they're definitely at their lowest and I think they'll come back up. Is it down to the fact that there were less of them made or is it down to the fact that they're not so much driven by a computer but an actual human or, or a I bit think both? both. Really? I, th okay. I think both, yeah. What about 991 GT3, particularly the Gen 2 cars? Well, I was going to say again, there's so many of them that I'm afraid I think they're just going to trickle down. Good news for the enthusiast. Yeah, it is good because people will get out and drive them. What about tips for 2020 then? Look, for me, 964 is a solid investment. You know, they're pretty bulletproof, you can drive them and you're not going to lose any money. The 993, to be fair, is the same, but it just depends, going back to what we said earlier on, the quality of the car. I think 997, some of the GT cars, as you mentioned earlier on, the GT3, I mean, I think the car's a bargain. You know, even a, a straightforward C2S, I think they're a, just a very underrated car. Mm. And you can pick a nice one of those up for probably £25,000. 991 as well. If turbos are your thing, they're looking like phenomenal value now. That's the 991 Gen 1. 991 Gen 1, I've seen those up recently for sort of late 70s. I don't think there's any other mark that you could go and buy with the performance um, and the comfort yeah. um, and reliability of a, of a 991 Turbo. Well look, I think you've gonna have pleased a lot of people there because you've gone some nice tips for air-cooled but also water-cooled as well. Yeah. I appreciate your time and insight as always. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonathan. So there we have it then. That's what our experts think on the Porsche marketplace for 2020. There are three messages to take home here. The first one is that there's lots and lots of choice right now. This really is a Porsche buyer's market. The second point is, with this adjustment of the marketplace, is that the cars are arguably better value than at any point over the last five years. That's something really worth considering. A car that perhaps you couldn't quite afford a few years ago might now come into your price range. The third point, and is what both our specialists are really keen to underline here, is that the GT flipper market looks to be behind us, which is great news for the enthusiast. So that's what the experts are saying for the market in 2020. After the doom and gloom last year, it looks like there's much excitement ahead. Buy well, buy wisely, and I'll see you in the next video.